Greetings, beloveds, and welcome to one of our first. Oh, she's here. She's going to join us in just a moment. I want to bring on this wonderful author who is one of our beloved sponsors. She's going to share some really great information about this new book that she has just published. I can't wait to give you some great insight into that. And I want to encourage you to make connections with her um, on Twitter. You can also follow her. Her name is author Tamara Shepard. Um, again, I'm going to bring her in right now and we're going to get started with this great empowering discussion. All right, beloveds, we have with us author Tamara. Did I say your name correctly? Tamara. <laughs> you there? Did it freeze? Can you hear me? Tamara? Okay, now I can hear you now. Okay, it froze for a second. Are, you, are we still good? Yes. Tamara Shepard. Okay. Uh, okay, good. So we have author Tamara or Tamara Shepherd yes. with us, and she's going to share some really great insight about this new book that she has written called The Chosen. Uh, she's not the first time that she's been featured on the Beloved platform. She wrote this cute little children's book uh, <laughs> that we featured. So I'll let her even talk about that one as well and just pretty much her journey. So Thank you so much. Um, why don't Thank you talk to us about yourself and, and your journey into book publishing? Hi, thank you for having me, Felicia. And hello, beloved. Nice to see everyone. Hi. Um, oh my gosh. I have uh, wanted to write since I was a little girl. Uh, I grew up in Chicago projects um, where reading and writing was my escape route just to get out of where we were, you know, that imagination thing. And I've always believed in God ever since I was a little girl. So now that I'm an adult, I wanted to know how to combine both of them, how to combine my writing as well as my faith. And um, I started, the first book was the children book. And uh, I wanted to encourage little children, just like when I was a little kid, I had someone to encourage me. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to inspire people, encourage people through, I don't care what it is I write. I just want to know, want everyone to know you're special. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to um, look at the positive, mm -hmm. always look at the positive. So that's the approach of my writing. And The Chosen is a little bit different. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you mentioned that you're from Chicago. And yes. um, a lot of times, well, I'll just give you some context. Those who are part of my audience are, um, it's like 90% conservative. And so we talk a lot about politics. And quite often what we do is we try to bring stories of Black Americans to this more mainstream platform because several conservatives are struggling with these stereotypes. Like, why are we constantly being called racist? Why are we constantly being... Um, told by this media or how come black voters don't want to talk to us and we're like no it's because of the people that you prop up who mm -hmm. create this image of black Americans as being dumb or stupid or slaves or just this that and the other and so you get the brunt of it you know I don't know if you've ever taken part oh, yeah. of my Twitter class <laughs> to see <laughs> uh, the kind of war that I'm like trying to work with them and so one of the ways that we have been very successful in bridging the gap between white conservatives and black voters is by storytelling and this is what I consider to be one of the most powerful um, strategies in terms of reminding people that we are humans we are citizens and there are certain individuals who are dealing with hardships related to politics or what our government and they need to know that other Americans are going to fight with them. So talk to us a little bit about your experience growing up in Chicago. You mentioned that reading and writing was like your escape. That's yes. something that they don't hear. That's something that a lot of people do not hear about how the power of storytelling has enables people who are going through a lot to escape and to travel into different. So anyways, I can go on and on, but talk to us about <laughs> that experience. 
Well, um, again, I grew up in Chicago and it was uh, lots of gangs, drugs, uh, you name it. Uh, and unfortunately we saw a lot of things dealing with the police as well. Um, and we thought the world forgotten about us, to be honest with you, because we lived in an environment that was uh, poverty stricken. So we didn't, honestly, as a child, I didn't think anyone cared. So I would read a book and look at pretty pictures or uh, another country. And I would think to myself, that's another world. I just don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe that living in poverty wasn't my life. I didn't want it to be my life. That was my situation at the time, but it didn't have to be my life. And I wanna tell you something, uh, Chicago is not as diverse depending on the area you grew up in. The area I grew up in, I was around nothing but African-Americans. I did not work around my first Caucasian person until I was 19 years old. I want you to think about that. So yes. I, did, I only saw brown faces. Mm -hmm. I didn't see other faces. So honestly, I didn't know how to interact with them mm. when I was 19, because I was used to being around those that was brown faces. And I just applaud you for uh, just bridging the gap between the worlds, because it's almost like there's another world. Mm -hmm. And that's why when, uh, and I'm getting, you know, trying not to get emotional about it because I'm just as passionate about it as you. You go, uh, you give us this platform and my platform is books. I want to bridge that gap through storytelling. I want to show a uh, different aspect, not only from my eyes, but from the eyes of those that I grew up around, even in my adulthood. I, college for example, was amazing. I got to meet other nationalities that I didn't see growing up as a child or even as a teen. I still didn't see them as a teen. That's incredible to me, to be in a world that you can be uh, segregated <laughs> is amazing. Is yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think it's interesting because my personal background is from being in California. It is extremely diverse. I mean, we're talking about like 25% black, 25 Hispanic, 35 white. I mean, it's so diverse, even in my dad's church, about 90% of the couples are, are um, multi-ethnic. <laughs> so oh, nice. me coming from that background and then going to college and seeing that there's only 2% of black people in this top university, then moving to the South in Georgia, that's where my daughter and I are today, and seeing Black people everywhere. It's like these cultural differences just really speak to the diversity in our country. And as such, these diverse experiences affect the way that we are treating people in politics. And so bringing these experiences to the forefront, even from the authors who connect with uh, the, the platform, I'm like, there's something that we all need to be connected to. And the only way that can happen is either our faith, you know, if we have a shared common faith in God yes. or our stories. And so um, I don't know if you're familiar with Sunny Johnson, but she was just, I was just doing a podcast with her or promoting her podcast. And she was talking about this whole thing as well, fellowship and getting to know mm -hmm. people and going beyond the talking points that our conservative media, we beat up conservative media all the time. <laughs> and folks are like, are you liberals? And we're like, no. Um, but we, we do it a lot because we're like, we, nobody else is going to help white conservatives get this unless a voice is going to be there to teach. And so that's what we try to do. And I love hearing about stories of individuals who are like as Tupac share, the rose that grew from concrete. I mean, that wow. poem is just phenomenal because yes. it proves that hardships do not have to kill us. 
Yes. It, it doesn't matter what background, you know, it, you could have come from the projects, you could have come from abject poverty, you could have come from privilege and had some kind of struggle. But what is that thing that's going to draw us together? And storytelling really does that in such a phenomenal way. My question to you is, did you have, do you have a favorite author who has inspired you to move into becoming a published author yourself? Hmm. Um, actually, I don't. I know that might sound weird to you. Um, I, I, I don't. I look at uh, actors, actually, actors and actresses that have inspired me to see them on the screen, as well as the movies. Believe it, believe it or not, movies inspired me more to write than authors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, seeing Matrix and seeing Roots um, just played out on the, the big screen, uh, seeing Good Times and seeing the Jeffersons and, you know, those things that I grew up with. And I thought to myself, wow, those are just, you know, stories about everyday life. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do that. I, you know, I've seen different things and I bring uh, something new to the table. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts is what inspired me to want to write, to be honest with you. Yeah. Those movies, those, those actors and actors that play a part, because that's all authors do. They're playing different characters uh, through storytelling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And it's the brilliance of those writers behind the scenes of those shows and films yes. who help bring it to life. And I think that's one of the more powerful elements of being an author. You're, an, you're, you're creative, you're taking your imagination and you're bringing it to the world. What would you say is your mission and purpose for becoming an author? What is it that you're trying to convey to readers all together through your writing ministry? Well, it's, um, I ask God something because I am a Christian first before everything. And I asked him to give me the ability to tell parables, even when I write. Even when I write, I want to be able to encourage people, uh, not only about him, not beat them upside the head about it, but I want people to see him in some type of way. I also want people to uh, feel the humanity side, the love side, the kindness side, the generosity side. I want anyone that picks up my book, I want them not only to see themselves in a better light, but I want them to see their neighbor in a better light. At the end of the day, I want my readers, whether it's a child or an adult or a teenager, want to go out there and change the world, want to go out there to be a part of the change. Even if that change means I'm going to support Felicia or I'm going to support Tamara, you, that's being a part of the change. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I want to change it. One person at a time, one book at a time, one word at a time. I want to be a part of the change. Nice. So now we get a chance to learn more about this newest book that you've written. And later on, I do want you to talk about your children's book as well. Um, this new book you said is a little different. It's called The Chosen. Uh, give us a synopsis of, of what this book is about. The synopsis? Okay, God had the angels to solicit humans to help keep the balance between good and evil. So the angels solicit the adults at first, but the adults after a while decided, you know, they had busy lives. For whatever reason, they stopped doing it. So then the angels gave the charge to a group of teens. And the teens took it on. They, they took it on, but it, it, it wasn't that easy. There's also a dark side as well. So the, the teens find out about themselves, about one another, 
And in the end, they find out how strong they really are. Nice. So your ideal reader for this particular book, is it geared towards teenagers? Yes, it's geared towards uh, middle school to teens. But I say even adults can learn something. Just learn how to support your teenager through the the vast changes that they're going through. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though I'm an adult, I do have a teen son. I have actually three kids. Mm -hmm. So I, I pulled from those teen moments. I pulled from the adults moments. I pulled from the moments where I'm still learning how to interact with my children. And so everyone, the team, the middle school kids, the teen kids, as well as the adults can definitely learn something from this book. Very nice. Who's the main character? What's his name? Talk to us about him or her. (laughs) Well, his name is Jake. Jake is the uh, main character. And um, Jake was quiet in the beginning. Jake uh, really was to himself. And his dad was actually one of the adults that had this mantle of being the chosen at first. So no one really supported the dad. And uh, so now Jake has it. He thinking, okay, maybe I'm, something's wrong with me like my dad. He really didn't believe it in the beginning. He didn't believe the whole process. So now he had to convince his new friends that they were chosen, that the angels actually selected them to make a change on earth. Good. Is this going to be a book series or is this just a solo project on this one? Actually, it's going to be a book series. I am in the process of starting book two now. I'm hoping to get it to my editor by the second week of October. (laughs) Okay, nice, nice. What what is the actual calling, I guess I want to say, that the angel is giving to um, Jake and others like him. Okay. Well, I took the, first of all, I had the, the book came to me in a dream. I actually saw the whole thing in a dream. Okay. And us as Christians, we have assignments, God given assignments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God give us the ability, uh, some of us, uh, love have ability to love greater than others. Some of us have the ability to be prophets, these different abilities. So I wanted to show those through the book, The Chosen. Okay. So Jake has the ability to talk one-on-one with the angels, you know, just like Elijah did, just like Elisha did, and just like David did, so many others. So this is really true, but yet it's in my fantasy book. Yeah. And um other ones, they have ability to heal. Now, you know, we've seen these things in the Bible, but we haven't, some of us haven't physically seen them with our own eyes. So one has the ability to, uh, like I said, to heal. Another one has ability to bring someone back from the dead. You know, we've seen this in the Bible as well. So I took the stories that we've seen in the Bible and I basically incorporated them through the chosen, nice. the chosen teens. I love that. Um, I, I love that you've highlighted how too often, well, I don't know if I'll call it too often, too little do individuals actually see folks functioning in the gifts or people receiving, you know, a, a an assignment from heaven about their purpose. It's one of the reasons I Whenever I, even if I'm talking politics, I tell folks I got insight from the Holy Spirit. I'm always talking about the Holy Spirit. Like, (laughs) coach, how did you hear that? How did you know that? I talked to him, right? Like heaven is available. We have Mm -hmm. access if we know how to talk to him and he, and and responding to him. Um, Tell me what, what inspired you to move in that direction per se, and and why for the kids? Why for the teenagers? Why did you want to hit them with that particular purpose and mission? Well, again, I saw it in a dream. Um, And as far as why the teens, once I sat down and started writing, the Holy Spirit led me to the teens. 
because it started out as an, uh, the adults. I'm telling you the story actually morphed mm-hmm. into this, <laughs> this, this incredible story right before my eyes. I honestly can't take the credit. It was, I was being led mm-hmm. to write to incorporate the teens. I want teenagers to know they are so powerful. They're more powerful than they know. They're very powerful. They can, actually a teenager led me to Christ. Nice. An 18 year old girl sat down at a college cafeteria and told me about her horrible story when she was two years old that she was brutally raped at two. And this teenager is telling me this story and I'm bawling my eyes out, but she had a smile. She was happy. And I wanted to know, how can I get that? I wanted what she had. How can you live from that? How do you even remember it? Right. So that teenager, that 18 year old stranger changed my life so i want these teenagers that's in this book to change someone else's life i don't know how (laughs) but i believe one teenager is going to see themselves in one of those characters and they're going to realize i have a gift too Mm -hmm. even if that gift is to tell a story even if that gift is I paint, I sing, you know, I, 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 I play an instrument, whatever it is, you can change a life with your gift. Yes, that's awesome. Um, my father, who is a pastor back in California, uh, 20 years ago, was very adamant about investing in the young adults, the youth in his church. And some of the older adults were very angry because they felt like he should be investing all of his energy in them. <laughs> and he took hits for it, you know? And oh. the, the reason I'm able to be where I'm at today is because of the training and spiritual development he and my stepmother really invested in us. And I mean like every single day, they were pouring, teaching us yeah. about warfare, teaching us about access, teaching us about the Holy Spirit. And now I can go toe to toe online with folks because of the training I received. And so I, I, I love that you are targeting um, the youth with such um, a simple message. It's not like here, know Jesus, because if you don't, you're gonna go to hell. I mean, that, that message kind of has its place <laughs> somewhere else. Exactly. But when, when you're talking to young adults about walking in purpose and becoming a change in this world. You have to do it from a different angle. Yes. And I think authors like yourself do a wonderful job of bringing storytelling to the table. For me growing up, this probably wouldn't have been the avenue for my salvation. I needed the punch. I needed the hard training, but yes. that was for me, right? Yes. And it, it, it matched what I'm doing today. And I think yes. your book is going to do the same for young adults who kind of are like shy and apprehensive and they're, you know, okay, I know Jesus a little bit, but that's enough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, no, 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 a little bit deeper. Uh, you know, what's your purpose and whatnot? So I, I love that so much. Um, before we wrap this up, is there... Is there a message that you really want readers to get that perhaps you haven't shared already? Um, I want them to live. That's, I want people to live. I want people to let others to live. Let people live. You know, we're seeing um, just a lot of division in the world. And I want people to let people live, let people be who they are. And you don't have to accept everyone for who they are, but don't hate them because they're different from you. Don't hate them. You know, I want people to let people live. 
I want people to, to love. That's what God is all about. He's about love. He is about love. You are to love everyone as yourself, as yourself. And maybe we need a little help learning how to love ourselves before we can love the next man. So I would also like my books to bring about love, self-love, self-hope. Sorry, I thought that was off. Uh, Self-love, self-hope, self-encouragement, encouraging others. I want, that's what I want us to do. I want us, we're brothers and sister. I'm your sister. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I'm a sister to everyone around the world. It doesn't matter where you come from. We are all sisters and brothers, every last one of us. So how can we hate our sisters? Even God said, how can you love a God you've never seen, but hate your brother? So I want people to learn from my books about love, about sharing, about encouraging, and about lifting one another up. That's what my books are going to bring about. It's going to bring about change. It's going to bring about love. It's going to bring about inspiration. And um, one person at a time. I want to touch one person at a time. One person. When I leave this earth, someone's life will be changed. That is awesome. As I mentioned, I wanted you to also talk briefly about your other children's book that I highlighted on the foundation's website. Um, Talk to us just briefly about it. Okay. I, I love animals. (laughs) I love, I love them. I'm allergic to most of them, (laughs) but but that doesn't stop me from loving them. Um, (laughs) So one book is my dog can do that too. It's about a boy and his dog. And just the imagination of children with animals. I mean, you would want your dog to do everything you can do. If you can get up and run, you want your dog to run. If you sit down, you want your dog to sit down. And that's what the story is about. The little boy, his dog did everything. His dog brushed his teeth. His dog ate his cereal. <laughs> that was one instant when the, do- the boy drew uh, a painting and the dog did the same thing, stuck <laughs> his paw in the, in the paintbrush and made the same painting. It was incredible. But that was one thing the dog couldn't do and that was go to school. The dog could not go to school with the little boy. (laughs) So that was one of my stories. I also have a story about being different. I have a story about uh, a spider. Felix the spider learns to fish. So when you're talking about children, you have to be careful because you have to, they're children. So I use the story where a spider wasn't like other spiders. The spider liked to drop his web off the tree. That's how he liked to fish for his food, so to speak. The other spiders made fun of them. So, you know, kids experience bullying at an early age. So I wanted the little children to see how the spider mom encouraged the baby spider. The baby spider remained different. The baby spider didn't change just because the other spiders didn't accept him. He kept catching his food the same way. Towards the end of the story, all the other spiders came to him to to learn how to catch their food just like him. So he became famous at the end of the story. I wanted little children to know it's okay to be different. It's okay to be different. And that's what that story is about. That's beautiful. Well, uh, Miss Arthur, Tamara. I have this thing about saying names like Ariel, Tamara, you know, I just like that sound. So (laughs) don't mind me. Oh, it's okay. (laughs) Thank you so much for, first of all, for being a beloved sponsor. As I mentioned, uh, our sponsors get uh, lifetime placement on our foundation because we're very much so interested in bringing some new authors and new books to our Mm -hmm. audience. We want them, eventually, I want it to be like the Amazon within this space. Like, uh, you don't even have to go to Amazon.com. Just go over here. (laughs) Um, Because there's so many more new independent authors who are rising up. Um, They're sharing their stories in very unique, creative ways. 
And it took me quite a while to build the platform that I have. And I always told the Holy Spirit, I would share, I would give a place for others to come present their product to a national platform um, because I know it can be a hellish uh, tool to try and build something like that. Yes. But yes. I want to thank you so much again for being a sponsor and for your book, your contributions to the uh, to the space of book publishing and, and really the children's space. I'm becoming more and more a fan of children's books. And <laughs> so uh, it's because authors like you have... Um, just kind of expanded my horizons. And so blessings awesome. to you. Thank you so very much. Thank tell you. us before we wrap up, tell us where we can find you online. Well, I am on uh, Twitter. I am on Facebook and I am also on Instagram. And on all three, you can find me under the name Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-A, -A, last name S-H-E-P-A-R-D. Tamara Shepard. That's how you can find me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And they can purchase your books. Is it on your exclusive website or is it on Amazon? Where can they go to purchase? For right now, it's on Amazon. Um, I'm headed toward a, a website eventually, um, Baby <laughs> Steps. Um, they can purchase it on uh, Amazon. My children books are under my legal name, Tamara Shepard. But the other genres will be under Tamara Banks. I just want to keep the children part of me separate from the other genres. Mm -hmm. So you can find me on Amazon under Tamara Shepard or under Tamara Banks. Very nice. All right. Well, beloveds, I hope that you enjoyed one of our first Zoom ch uh, chats with our newest author. Uh, we look forward to bringing you some other great authors in the very near future. I'm pretty sure Tam Tamara is going to do another book and we're yes. definitely going to bring her back. Uh, again, head over to Amazon. You can also go to the Felicia Killings Foundation. Uh, her book will be featured there and it will take you to her various links. So you're going to love it. All right, beloveds, I will see you very soon.